Dyslexia Awareness Module, Section 3, Evidence-Based Instruction. Section 3 of the Dyslexia Awareness Module focuses on evidence-based instruction and intervention for students with dyslexia through structured literacy. First, we will review the components of structured literacy. Next, we will discuss evidence-based structured literacy interventions for students with dyslexia. After that, we will review accommodations for students with dyslexia. Finally, we will discuss a range of assistive technology supports for students with dyslexia. Objectives of Section 3 of the Dyslexia Module are as follows. Participants will gain awareness of the components of structured literacy. Participants will learn about evidence-based reading interventions and accommodations that support students with dyslexia. Finally, participants will gain awareness of assistive technology that supports students with dyslexia. Part 1. Structured Literacy In this activity, check your knowledge of structured literacy as it pertains to students with dyslexia. Please pause the video and complete Activity 3-1. Structured literacy is evidence-based intervention recommended by the International Dyslexia Association, IDA, and other leading organizations, that are dedicated to increasing awareness of dyslexia and effective instructional practices for students with dyslexia. In D.C., evidence-based instruction and intervention for all students, including students with dyslexia, begins with core or Tier 1 instruction. Core reading instruction includes instruction in the five components of reading, phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension, as identified by the National Reading Panel, NRP, and the DC's Comprehensive Literacy Plan. Structured literacy supports these five core reading instructional areas of phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. Structured literacy focuses on teaching and learning of specific content, as well as specific methods for teaching foundational reading skills that support students with dyslexia to become proficient readers. From a prevention standpoint, early and intensive structured literacy for students with reading difficulties and dyslexia can lessen the severity of students' reading difficulties and support their academic and social-emotional well-being. This graphic shows how structured literacy combines evidence-based elements such as phonology, semantics, and syntax, along with evidence-based teaching principles, which together lead to effective reading instruction. A student's core reading instruction should be based on structured literacy components, which all students receive in their general education classrooms. Students with dyslexia benefit from evidence-based reading instruction, specifically designed to address their reading, writing, and spelling challenges, which are identified through screening. Students with specific learning disabilities, SLD, should receive specially designed reading instruction, in addition to Tier 1 core instruction. The instructional content, or what is taught within structured literacy, includes six specific content areas that are directly related to challenges that students with dyslexia encounter when learning to read. These areas include phonology, and specifically phonemic awareness, sound symbol correspondence, syllabication and orthographic patterns, morphology, semantics, and syntax. The table on the right side of this slide gives two examples of how structured literacy differs from typical literacy practice. For example, structured literacy that is focused on phonics teaches skills explicitly and systematically, with the prerequisite skills taught sequentially or first, so that skills can build upon each other systematically. This is important for beginning readers, and they may need considerable emphasis on these initial skills to provide a foundation for learning subsequent phonics skills. By contrast, typical literacy practices for phonics are taught, but they are not emphasized sequentially. Also, the teaching of phonics skills is not highly explicit or systematic. Prerequisite skills may not be taught first. The second example compares structured literacy and typical literacy practices focused on decoding skills, and how the two approaches differ. In structured literacy, students apply their decoding skills to read unfamiliar words during oral reading. By contrast, in typical literacy practices, when students read orally, their decoding errors may be overlooked, and the teacher's feedback may emphasize context or pictures, rather than the consistent application of the student's decoding skills to their oral reading. Next, we will review each of the areas of structured literacy. Since dyslexia comes from phonological level challenges in a student's ability to process sounds at the word level, syllable level, and sentence level, Structured literacy intervention in the area of phonology is key for students with dyslexia to make progress in reading. For example, the letter C can make the k sound, like in cat, or C can make the s sound, like in ice. As students become more advanced, they will learn segmenting, 
blending, deleting, and substituting sounds within words to make new words. For example, sound blending is when a student hears the sounds or phonemes, k, uh, t, and can blend them to say the word, ka. More advanced phonological processing skills are important for spelling and reading fluency, and include breaking apart sounds in spoken words through segmentation, blending sequences of speech sounds, deleting sounds, or substituting sounds within words to make new words. Phonological skills are strong predictors of a student's early reading and spelling achievement, and they distinguish students with and without dyslexia. These foundational skills are taught in preschool, kindergarten, and first grade. Many students with dyslexia have difficulty with phonological processing and need ongoing support through their school years. Sound symbol, phoneme grapheme, correspondences is another area of structured literacy intervention that supports students with dyslexia. An alphabetic writing system like English represents its language sounds, or phonemes, with alphabet letters, or graphemes. Graphemes include both single letters and letter combinations to represent language sounds or phonemes in print. The phonics, or alphabetic code, for written words is the system of correspondences between phonemes and graphemes. The correspondences between letters and speech sounds in English are more complex and varied than languages like Spanish or Italian. Direct instruction in letter sound correspondences should be systematic, explicit, and cumulative, as students encounter more advanced language and reading content in school. These skills may take several years to develop. Students with dyslexia benefit from explicit and direct instruction in sound symbol correspondence, or matching language sounds to symbols, both individual letters and letter combinations. Being able to quickly match the sound to the letter or letters is directly related to being able to blend sounds together to make a word. Matching sounds to symbols begins in pre-kindergarten and continues into elementary grades when students are taught advanced vowel patterns, EA, EE, AI, AY, OA, etc. The patterns and conventions, or rules of print, or orthography, include word parts such as syllables and letter patterns. Through explicit instruction and practice, students with dyslexia can understand and remember patterns of letter use in their writing system. These word attack strategies will help students to decode, read, and spell complex words more accurately and efficiently. Some examples of English orthographic patterns or conventions include spellings for consonant sounds, such as CK, TCH, and DGE, which are used only after short vowels. In English, some letters, like V and J, cannot be used at the ends of words. Also, in English, only some letters are doubled. Structured literacy interventions explicitly teach six types of written syllables, closed, calm, mand, open, me, no, vowel consonant e, take, plate, vowel team, vowel, meme, vowel or combinations, car, port, and the final consonant le pattern, little, humble. Recognizing written syllable patterns helps a student to divide longer words into readable chunks, and helps them to understand and apply spelling conventions, such as doubling of consonant letters, little, versus title. A morpheme is the smallest unit of meaning in a language. Morphemes include prefixes, roots, base words, and suffixes. These meaningful units are often spelled consistently, even though pronunciation changes when they are combined into words, for example, refine refinery, local location, present presentation. Teaching students with dyslexia to recognize the word parts and know the meaning of these units helps them with decoding, building vocabulary, and becoming more accurate and efficient readers. For example, learning morphemes helps students to understand meanings of new words that they are reading, and also helps them to spell words. In DC, the teaching of common prefixes and suffixes begins in second grade in core instruction. Semantics is the part of language that is focused on meaning. Semantics refers to the meaning of spoken and written words and is related to a student's language comprehension. Meaning can be conveyed through single words, word combinations, and by complete sentences. Structured literacy instruction in semantics includes teaching vocabulary meaning, at the word level, understanding phrases and sentences, at the sentence level, and understanding text level structure slash organization. Comprehension of both oral and written language is developed by teaching vocabulary words, supporting students to understand phrases and sentences, and helping students to recognize different text structures and organization. Semantics instruction is important to students' listening and reading comprehension and should be addressed throughout a student's reading instruction. Syntax is the system for ordering words and phrases and sentences in a language to convey meaning. Syntax includes understanding parts of speech, 
like verbs, pronouns, and articles, as well as the rules of grammar and word use in sentences. Syntax also includes understanding and using simple, compound, and complex sentences. For example, syntax can affect meaning through word order. The example in red font shows a sentence with the prepositional phrase, in the yard, in red. In the sentence, Sally plays in the yard, if the order of the words is changed to place the noun, Sally, after the preposition, it affects the meaning of the sentence and cannot be understood, as it says, in Sally, the yard plays. Structured literacy syntax instruction should be addressed throughout a student's reading instruction, as it supports both their vocabulary and comprehension development. Let's review what we've learned about the components of structured literacy. Please pause the video and complete assessment 3.1. Part 2, Instruction and Intervention Principles. Structured literacy instructional principles are how structured literacy is being taught. These principles are the foundation of reading instruction and intervention. Structured literacy instruction is explicit and direct. Teachers should clearly and deliberately explain the decoding and literacy concepts that students are learning. Structured literacy instruction is systematic and sequential. Teachers should follow a logical scope and sequence that introduces new concepts and reviews students' previously learned concepts. Structured literacy instruction is diagnostic. Teachers should continually monitor students' progress and adapt lessons to students' responses, making instructional decisions based on students' learning between lessons. Structured literacy instruction is multisensory. Teachers should integrate visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and tactile modalities in student learning activities. Structured literacy instruction is analytic. Teachers should guide students in analyzing aspects of the English language, like phonemes, orthographic patterns, and syllables, to support students' decoding and word recognition skills. Here are some examples of structured literacy instructional principles in classroom settings. Systematic phonics instruction is when each sound, letter, and phonics concept is taught in a logical manner and reviewed daily. Direct and explicit instruction is when a teacher gives specific explanations and corrective and immediate feedback to students. Diagnostic instruction is when a teacher monitors a student's progress through formative assessment, such as a weekly word reading list, allowing for review based on the student's response to reading instruction. Multisensory instruction is when a teacher helps students connect auditory slash oral language, speech, to the visual slash written language, print, and also using tactile and kinesthetic modalities to learn oral and written concepts. Analytic instruction is when a teacher explicitly teaches rules for vowels, syllable types, and strategies for decoding multisyllabic words. Students use this knowledge to analyze decodable parts of high-frequency words based on phonic rules. Let's review what we've learned about instruction and intervention principles. Please pause the video and complete assessment 3-2. Part 3, Accommodations. Accommodations support students with dyslexia to access the reading curriculum and demonstrate their understanding, without reducing the content or expectations of their performance. Accommodations are based on a student's individual characteristics and behavior during instruction and testing in classroom settings. Here are the different types of accommodations for students with dyslexia. Response, for example, oral-slash-spoken versus written. Timing and scheduling, for example, extended, shorter test segments. Setting, for example, small group, individual, distraction-free. Presentation, for example, enlarged text, graphic organizer. Students with an individualized education program, IEP, or 504 plan may receive specific accommodations during instruction and on assessments according to the information. Here are some examples of accommodations in response and timing and scheduling for students with dyslexia. Response accommodations could involve a student's oral or dictated response instead of a written response on assignments or tests. Timing and scheduling accommodations may include extended time on reading assignments support students with dyslexia due to slower language processing and reading skills. Extended time on reading tests help students with dyslexia to sustain energy and interest in tasks that require decoding. Scheduling reading tests into time segments helps students with dyslexia to show their knowledge and to accomplish each segment. Here are some examples of accommodations in setting for students with dyslexia. Preferential seating may optimize a student's focus on reading instruction or assessment. An individual study carol may reduce environmental distractions for a student when they are engaged in reading instruction or assessment. Here are some examples of accommodations in presentation for students with dyslexia. Enlarged or spaced text that is distributed can support students with dyslexia with language processing demands. 
Graphic organizers can support students with dyslexia by visually organizing concepts or information, which reduces the amount of required text processing for understanding. Word banks are helpful for students with dyslexia to recall and use targeted spelling patterns and writing instruction. Vocabulary can be pre-taught to students with dyslexia in content areas like science, social studies, and math, to support their decoding and comprehension. Slides or class notes may support students with dyslexia during, or in advance of classes to focus on learning the content without having the language processing demands of decoding text and processing language. Let's recap the main ideas of accommodations for students with dyslexia. Accommodations are designed to level the playing field, through improving student access to reading instruction and intervention. Accommodations should be developed with the student and used consistently in classroom settings where reading instruction occurs. Accommodations should not change the content of reading instruction or assessment. Accommodations provided for classroom reading instruction or assessment may not be allowable on district assessments. Information on the use of special test accommodations can be found in Aussie's resource publication, Guidelines for Testing Accommodations. Aussie's Accommodations Adaptations Matrix provides accommodations that students with dyslexia may access in distance, hybrid, or in-person learning environments. Let's review what we've learned about accommodations. Please pause the video and complete assessment 3-3. Part 4, Assistive Technology. What is assistive technology, also called AT? AT is any device, software, or tool that helps people learn, communicate, or function better. It can be as high-tech as a tablet or as low-tech as a pencil grip. AT includes any equipment, products, and systems designed to improve or maintain the functional learning of students with dyslexia. AT is a support for function rather than ability, and removes barriers to performance for students with dyslexia. AT is an effective way to maximize students' access, participation, and progress in reading instruction and intervention. Extend your learning about AT for students with dyslexia, by reading the article linked to this slide, about how a teen with dyslexia has used AT throughout his education. AT for reading includes text-to-speech tools that support reading comprehension for students with dyslexia who struggle with decoding. Other ATs for reading may include handheld devices for students reading individual words, pictures symbols to accompany text for student comprehension, and text-to-speech tools for a student's electronic text reading. According to DC Special Education Regulations, assistive technology is any item, piece of equipment, or product system whether acquired commercially off-the-shelf, modified, or customized, that is used to maintain or improve the functional capabilities of a child with a disability. Please see Section 5E3016 on Assistive Technology, part of DC's Rules and Regulations, at the link in the slide. Listed below are the subsections. 3016.1. The LEA shall ensure that assistive technology devices and or services are made available to a child with a disability if required as part of the child's special education, related services, or supplementary aids and services. 3016.2. The use of school-purchased assistive technology devices in a child's home, or in other settings, is required if the child's IEP team determines, on a case-by-case -case basis, that the child needs access to those devices in the home, or other settings, in order to receive FAPE. An IEP team must consider a student's needs for assistive technology, while a 504 team should consider a student's needs for assistive technology. Both the IEP team and the 504 team are responsible for determining the type of assistive technology appropriate for individual students. All decisions regarding AT should be based on a student's individual needs. In this activity, extend your learning about tools and technologies for students with dyslexia. Please pause the video and complete activity 3-2. Let's review what we've learned about assistive technology. Please pause the video and complete assessment 3-4.